You're watching United Gospel Explosion. United Gospel Explosion. TV! See, I'm a gangster of God, and I'm spreading the word. That's right. Truth be told, that's right, truth be heard. No matter what you get, this is made to see. So give it up for victory. All right, all right. Hey, look, I just wanted to pause for the cause. Just stop everything for a minute and say thank you for tuning in again to United Gospel Explosion TV. Hope you enjoyed our first half. Uh, that was myself, uh, Kenny Ken, called him Kenny the Plumber, one of our comedic actors that we've helped bring up in this business, and I hear he's doing all right. Of course, Hollis Jordan from over at City Stars. Uh, join the teams to be to present to you uh, some of our new programs and some of the new activities we're doing. But hold on to the joining teams. That's what this uh, segment is going to be about. Uh, renewing your energy, renewing your faith, joining teams, you know, uh, building up on a, a, a bright tomorrow. That's what we're, we're about in here, uh, coming into this Thanksgiving season. And I just want to say gobble, 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 gobble. I don't know about y'all, but uh, I don't know. If you don't have anyone cooking for you, make a quick friend, you know. Go to church somebody or Mars or something where the, where the women actually uh, still celebrate and uh, cook for Thanksgiving and befriend them. Uh, I was telling, uh, I had to double, time moves so fast, you know, I had to double check with my girl Renee here, stepping out on faith. Uh, y'all, everyone knows Renee, and uh I say, Renee, ain't this Thanksgiving this week? She said, yeah, it's Thursday, too. So I'm saying gobble, 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 gobble. But we have so much to be thankful for. And so that's really what it's about. We want to kind of highlight that in this last section of the show and tell you about some good news things we're doing. Let's talk about Thanksgiving for a minute. Um, <clears throat> oftentimes, you know, um, we think about the turkey. Um, of course, the dressing. Oh, don't make me think about food because now I'm going to the macaroni and cheese and, it, and the list goes on and on. But uh, that's not the only reason we give thanks. And historically, we know this was a pilgrimage-type dinner that the um, even the Native Indians had a part in. But today, I think we have to give a special thanks um, just for being able to be survivalists as a people, you know, um, we're having fun, but this is real deal stuff. You know, we saw a lot of dissension in our community, in our neighborhood, even our nation over the last couple of years uh, for whatever reason. But dissension, just the, the, the power of dissension and evilness, separation. Uh, but we overcame all of those, and we're still here, you know. Uh, we're still one nation. People have their differences with each other, but it's still one nation, one love. You know that that we're that we're working in. So, no matter what, I'm thankful for those things. I'm. I was um, meditating on. On what this has really been about this journey of television and radio, and you guys see me out there doing different film projects and. Uh, I'm all over the place. And I said to myself, I, I had to ask God, I said, God, why you got me going all these different places? I'm in Cali one week. I'm in Florida. I'm here in Detroit. We, we're doing our thing. But I think, it's, I think it's a collecting and a connectiveness of people. Um, uh, spreading the band of love is really what this thing is all about. So I'm saying, if you think this is something I always tell you, he ain't through with me yet, so just bear with me, because I, I would like to be used even more. I see us going uh, to different nations and still spreading the love. And so we're, we're combining our resources, though. Um, we're looking for the new opportunities for my people, and I find them by dealing with other people. And I'm also looking for new opportunities, period, where we can lift ourselves up and lift others up. And, uh, you know, I was telling someone, we were having a conversation that if you find yourself at your lowest point, if you ever find yourself in need of money, for example, or, 
or whatever it is, get some of that away. You know, if you find yourself in need of, you find your dollars short, then recognize the power of giving and give a few dollars away, you know. It don't have to be anything big, just according to what you have. But what I'm saying, if you share your little bit, then you exercise a power of God, of the universe, that it gives back to you, and things begin to happen. And um, I'm going there a little bit today because I'm in the spirit of Thanksgiving, and this is actually uh, we're coming towards the last month, December of this year. So, whew, you know, I don't know about you, but this thing was so fast. You know, you have to uh, strap on your seatbelt, but. If you can believe it or not, next month is the last month of the year. So, you know, I'm reflecting, and, and I'm and I'm totally grateful. You know that um, uh, miracles still are happening today in our lives. You know, and uh, I believe in miracles. I believe in uh, uh, tomorrow's great tomorrows, and I believe that it's not just for me, but you have a great tomorrow too. So, I just want to encourage somebody that's listening to our show to be. Um, to be on point that things are happening and, and things are opening up to your favor. You know, I was um I was in uh uh in California last week and we were talking with uh some of my people down there and they were and they were speaking on the possibilities of doing business in Detroit. The possibilities of Detroit's comeback. And I'm I say, well let me be frank with you. You may call it a Detroit a comeback, but Detroit has never went anywhere. It's the um, ill propaganda, the bad news stories you hear about the city. You know, when you when you're out there, they be like, "You from Detroit?" I say, "I'm a product of Detroit." Look at me. This is how we. This is how we really live and roll. You know, Detroit isn't a uh, as tore down as you think. And and actually, so long story short, these people flew in. I say, oh, they done flew into town. I would but do it. But uh, they want to see the real Detroit, uh, see the possibilities I was talking about of investing, of doing great things. So some of you investors out there, get with me because I'm picturing international teams, you know, where African-Americans are going to be dead in the center of that. You know, I am african -American. I am who I am. So I am looking for other people to join with that can bring something to our community and to be able to create wealth and jobs and prosperity. So this team came down with, and you guys know I've been dealing with a lot of agents to my partner, uh, Quarter Den, and, uh, and uh, some of our other friends there. So they came in and uh, they asked me to give them a little tour. So I took him over to uh, Rosedale Park, and I took him over to um, uh, East English Village, and then we went down to Indian Village, down, you know, down on Burns with the big mansions. <laughs> they were, uh, oh my God, I can't just believe this is Detroit. I said, well, you ain't seen nothing yet, and I took him over to Palmer Woods, you know, and then I took him to the smaller streets, too, the the upcoming streets, and I took them dead in the hood, you know, and I say, so, well, I want you to know it's a, it's a great disparity of people here, that, that, that our, um, our power comes in our diversity within our own segments, that, that you can go in and find some areas that's deep in the neighborhood. I took them over off school craft. Yep, yes, I did. You say what you want to say. I took him over off Schoolcraft and gave him a good uh, view of Schoolcraft and what was happening over there and um, uh, uh, the possibilities of you being able to put a few dollars in the community and change that whole block or changes that whole neighborhood. And so <clears throat> I'm saying that to say that they were fascinated, but more than that, I said, at the end of the day, I said, so what do you want to do? You know, what do you want to do? Do you want to come invest with me here? Do you want to come and do business with us here in the city? I know you're from California. One was from New York. They're from all over. I say, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to be a part of a positive change in our city and, and help us uh, 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 create employment from brothers with these houses and these different projects that's here? Are you willing to do that? And so, like I say, I believe in miracles that, I'm not looking for the sky to open up, though, in a, 
and a gold car to come down or a gold harp to come down <laughs> or the gold angel statues to fly around. No, I'm looking for miracles in our everyday life that today we're going out looking for people that we can make a change in their life. And that the change may be small or it may be big, but the idea of combining our resources together, being a team builder. And I'm saying this for you. I want you to be a team builder as well. Pull your resources together now and do something. We shouldn't have to wait on Washington to save us all the time. Yes, we want everything we have coming from Washington. Every break, every uh, incentive. Uh, I even want reparations uh, uh, for my people. You know, they went through slavery, broken homes. But we're not dependent on that to move forward. We're not dependent on an outside agenda. I'm seeing you, collectively you, all you and one person, that you get up and pull your resources together. Call your friends you know that's doing positive things and build teams. So again, for Thanksgiving, I'm thinking of team building for everybody, you know, that we're coming out here, we're beginning to uh, put our small things together. And, uh, and through this, I feel like love still wins you know love still wins you know and um to my ministers out there to the pastors preachers teachers you know to the mas leaders out there anyone that's demonstrating the seed of love i would say that show that love to the people through actions you know uh don't i'm not down to anyone i don't want to make it a negative issue but before I go to break, because I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna talk about the movie opportunity that we have in Detroit through my outside friends that's actually here now, and I want you to be a part of. But right now, I just want to talk about the power of combining our resources, the power of loving each other as a group, power groups. Really, uh, could you imagine just four? Um, people thinking on the same level, um, going into any community, they may have 20,000 apiece. They may have 1,000 apiece. But going into a community with those little resources saying, what can we do to change this community and help ourselves at the same time? I know I talked to uh, some of the people in the studio that's very entrepreneur-minded, um, uh, my little producer here, man, he kills me. He got generational wealth going on. So, you know, he's a young man. So he comes to me saying generational wealth. And I, and, and, and I looked and I, and, I, and I thought that they get it. They actually get it. They see that it's not just about us anymore. It's generational wealth. So respecting our fathers that may have worked in a plant or hustled for their business or RJ at this TV station or, um, or, or one of the people out there with their restaurant, second, third generation now. They struggled with that, but it was still wealth. They provided the income. They provided a necessity for people. Then this next generation comes on, and they've seen you do that. Well, they may have a little more education, be a little more computer savvy, but, but it stacks on top of each other. Now, this next generation, they didn't have to start from scratch. The generational wealth. So, and then now, now the wealth that the last generation left may not have been material dollars, but it was knowledge, you know. And can I tell you something? I'm going to pause a minute. Can I, I'm going to tell you this secret. I'm, I'm going to go to a break, but I just want to let you know something that, I remember when my mother, mother, my mother passed, uh, Laura Torn, some, some years ago. I don't remember the years. I have a problem with that. But, but over 15 years ago. And, and one thing she used to say was uh, when she left here, before she knew she was dying, so she, she told me, you know, I don't have a bunch of money and nothing to leave you, you know, and I don't have this. But, you know, she had already taught me uh, to be an uh, independent man, to get up and cut the grass or paint or wash walls or, you know, the work, you know, to, to get it done. But she gave me that seed and I have seen her, uh, like you've seen your parents that left, work hard and whatever they were doing. Um, I remember riding on ice cream trucks as a kid, selling the kids ice cream out the windows. And all that built my entrepreneur side, I feel. So, Oftentimes, the wealth that's left by the last generation 
do you feel what I'm saying, isn't a green dollar, but the knowledge that you have that catapults you into the situation you're in today. Should I say that one more time? <laughs> but I do feel that the wealth that you give to the, to the generation that follows you won't always be monetary, but it can be knowledge. It can be will. Like when I saw the this, this story of Harriet, Harriet Tubman, it, it pulled my heart because what she had, she used. All they could do was run and fight to get free. But that's what she shared with other people. So that was her wealth to the next generation. So whatever you can do, remember somebody's watching you. The next generation is always watching you. So off of that soapbox, so that's that generation. Now this generation that this young man is living in. Well, he may come up with a, a total different seed uh, of wealth to spread into his family and offspring. Teaching them to be kings and queens again. You know, so Thanksgiving is such a powerful season for me because I'm not just giving thanks for the turkey and the gobble gobble and the pilgrimage of the Indians and the Quakers. I'm giving thanks for you and me coming together and uh, being to build this thing into the great thing that it will be, you know. I can see us coming together, and you see it now. And I go down Seven Mile. I love the businesses that's lined up, and we're going to do another entrepreneurship um, take throughout the year, throughout 2020. Just a whole other set of takeoff and giving time to plant the seeds of entrepreneurship within our community as well. We have a lot to learn. We have a lot to learn about loving correctly so those people that know how to love and share love more fluently I'm going to be inviting them into the show too right in the middle of entrepreneurship because I feel when you bring these groups together if you're not loving up on each other by that mean loving up on each other helping each other's needs building each other as a unit you're missing the whole point point. and um one of my Arabic friends, I was doing their uh, associates, I was doing their house, and the young man asked me a question that kind of offended me at first. And um, then I began to think about it, and I wasn't so offended, but I think I, I was thrown into action. He said that we're different from you. I said, what? He said, we're different from you. The way we care about our families, the way we share in our unit is different than you. I said, what do you mean by that? He gave me an example. He said, well, he said, you have any sisters? I said, yes, I have sisters. He said, how often, look at this, how often do you call your sister? How often do you talk to her during the course of a day? And I thought to myself, I said, wait a minute. Hmm. Last time I talked to my sister, she is all right, but that's been like two weeks ago, right? <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I called her last week. We I saw her in church Sunday, you know. And he said that I call my sister at least three times a day. Well, you know, I couldn't do that because mine would hang up on me before. <laughs> so we, we don't have that kind of understand. But she was like, what do you want? You, you, I understand how to you today. But they call his sister three times a day. They check with their family on a regular basis. They are looking to see are they all right. They're making sure each finger of that hand is there and working. And then they're bringing those hands together. If you see the term, analogy I'm making, and they become a close, strong unit. Some of my Asian friends, they got together, and I'm just giving you this out here. They got together, and they... um. They pooled their resources, and they bought a house off of the lake, built it from the ground up. Everyone pitched their money in their unit. They worked in their nail shops or whatever they did and helped pay for the one Asian's house. They didn't all stay in there together. They just helped pay for his. 
And then, coincidentally, they took another one out the group and did theirs. When I went out to visit him recently, they owned most of the houses around this little infield lake. It was beautiful. So just loving each other correctly, working with each other correctly can build you up. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm going to come back and talk about uh, where you can get involved with the Nail Shop movie, the new movie I wrote, The Nail Shop. And uh, I'd like you to be a part of that. I would like you to, if you would like, I would like you to be able to uh, get involved. There's going to be some paid, um, some paid actors in there, and I'd love it if you could be one of them. Okay, you guys, hold on. We'll be right back after this brief pause. You're watching United Gospel Explosion. United Gospel Explosion. TV! See, I'm a gangster of God, and I'm spreading the word. Right. Truth be told, that's why right. truth be heard. No matter what your gift is, it's made to see. So give it up. Total Home Improvement Company presents the Spring Blowout Special of the Season. Remodel your kitchen, bathroom, basement, plus flooring specials for every room. Call 313-728-2025 for your free in-home estimate today. Mention this commercial and get 10% off your project. Call 313-728-2025. Remodel your home today. Total Home Improvement, the company you call for your home improvement needs. You're watching United Gospel Explosion. United Gospel Explosion. TV! See, I'm a gangster of God and I'm spreading the word. Right. Truth be told, that's why right. truth be heard. No matter what you get, it's just made to see. So give it up. All right, all right, all right. I had to come back. I put on my professor glasses. These are my writer glasses. I put these on uh, just so you could know I ain't playing. This is where we get down, y'all. Uh, so if you enjoyed the last little segment I did, we were talking about Thanksgiving and moving as a unit together. I was, I was trying to put the word out that we're stronger together, that we're stronger when we can combine our resources and move forward. I talked a little bit about generational wealth. My man Sean, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, producer here, Sean Watkins, uh, he has a, a, a whole stream of clothing line where it says generational wealth. And I was breaking a little bit into that, what it takes to really have generational wealth, that the knowledge from one nation may be, may be you know, the finances for the next nation, which may build the actual infrastructure, the buildings, the, 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 the wherewithal for the next nation to grow, but generation. So we're building generation by generation by generation. That's truly generational wealth. Um, I believe you see that with the Fords. Henry Ford was in the little barn. Well, not a little barn, but he had a barn, a farm, and that's where the first Model T was made. <laughs> they went in there and came out with this program. I still think they took uh, uh, Eli Whitney, uh, the cotton gin. You know, the brother made the cotton gin because he was tired of being no picking cotton, so he... They took the front of it off and just rolled around in it. Now, there you go. I'm just saying. I'm not talking about Mr. Ford, and I can't prove that was so. But I'm just saying it was, it was generational wealth. He went from that low barn to what you see now as Ford Motor Company. Um, but I promise you guys that uh, we're looking for that same resource. We're looking for the right team to do films and movies with now. Um, I, I was telling my associates that, my idea of a movie isn't this, of making movies, isn't the movie I'm making. The movie I'm making is making a movie, but I want to make some movies. I want to uh, use teams to do that, and you may be part of those teams as well. Contact me at 313-728-2025 if you'd be part, like to be part of our Worldwide Film Factory team where we look to make movies. And I say worldwide because I can't discriminate about who would get involved. Everyone can get involved. Tomorrow is Saturday. Saturday here in the city, uh, we are having a casting call. And you're going to James Torrance. 
T O R R E N C E the second. Friend me on there, and you go on, and you'll get the uh, address uh, and the and the wherewithal of the characters involved. If you ever want to do that, I'm taking my glasses off because <laughs> I'm just using for reading. I can't hardly see you, but um, get involved. Get involved with us. We'd like you to come out. I hope you get excited about the projects we're doing. Um, you're proud of them. You are actually proud of the projects. Uh, I would like to see. Uh, Detroiters on the production end more as well, even though we're dealing with people from California, Hollywood, uh, Vietnam. What's up to my brother, my namesake James No out in Vietnam doing this thing. He's made over uh, 37 successful movies and he'll be part of our team for our movie making adventures, uh, especially this first Asian black comedy, The Nail Shop. So, uh, be a part of it. It's on the Quinter. The time for the casting tomorrow is from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. Uh, you must go on to my site, uh, James Torrance II, T-O-R-R-E-N-C-E, -E, with two capital I's behind it. I'll friend you. If you go on the site, you'll be able to actually see the casting. I want you to make an effort towards that. That's why having people go on the site and do something. So we know if you do one thing, you might do another. And that leads to success. Well, we're doing a few things out there. Um, again, I want to thank uh, uh, City Star Studio, who's made a commitment to help with the music there. Um, where we'll be shooting over at uh, Steve Thompson's house, a TCBC Center, Steve and Barbara Jean Johnson. Uh, we also have... Uh, Shots being done at Glamour Nails, uh, Glamour Nails, and Warren Michigan also. They'll be seeing shot. And I can't forget my man Terry Davis over there at Detroit Cabinet Manufacturing, letting us use part of the building to shoot scenes. Um, oh, I hate to go to the Navy because you might forget somebody. But my man Ivan over at the Glass House. What's up, Ivan? The Glass House. Uh, Again, they're allowing us to shoot scenes on their facilities. And each person is coming out to cast and put their heart into it. You know, you may not do this particular movie, even if you cast. But when you go through these things, I want you to think uh, collectively that do a lot of casting, get in front of a lot of different productions. And uh, if one picks you out of 10, you're still working, you know, so... That's my theory on um, uh, the entertainment industry. You got to get out there and do it. But casting this tomorrow, thank you guys. I hope you have a great, great, great Thanksgiving this Thursday. Eat some turkey for me, but not too much. Just enjoy yourself and continue to show love to somebody else. And remember, reach out, tell somebody you love them, but don't just talk it. Be about it. Show somebody you love them. You've been watching United Gospel Explosion TV. Peace. We love you. See you next week. You're watching United Gospel Explosion. United Gospel Explosion. TV! See, I'm a gangster of God and I'm spreading the word. Truth be told, that's right. Truth